We've all heard about how AI tools like ChatGPT are going to replace our jobs, but can they replace your therapist? Well, a company called Coco did a little experiment to find out how well the robots can do in the world of mental health. Coco has a platform where you can ask mental health questions and get answers from other users. In October, Coco rolled out a tool that lets you get help from GPT-3 in your mental health support responses. But after just a few days, Coco shut it down. And when Coco's co-founder Rob Morris went on Twitter to talk about what happened, the internet exploded. We called Morris to get the real story and find out whether AI is going to be your next shrink. You did this experiment. Uh, or maybe it's better to call it a test on your platform using AI. Can you tell us about what you were trying to learn about and what you were testing uh, and a little bit about how it went? So we're always trying to find ways to help uh, our helpers on our platform write better messages to each other. And our team had been working with GPT-3 for a long time, well over a year now. And we found a really interesting opportunity to help our peer supporters craft better messages with an assist from GPT-3. So we find that a lot of our supporters on the platform are copy pasting templates of their own or they're copy pasting song lyrics. Um, so it sort of naturally fit into the design pattern that was already there. Uh, and that's, that's where the idea came from. And the way it worked in practice was we gave people the option to get a GPT-3 generated response that they could then edit, they could modify, they could use as is, and then pass it along to uh, the recipient who would then get an attribution that said, hey, this was co-written um, by CocoBot in this case. So the way it worked is like a, a, this particular feature was set up on the part of the platform where people can ask for mental health support, they ask for a particular question, and then other users can respond and there was this AI feature for a couple of days when you were testing it that let people use uh, automated uh, responses using GPT-3. Is that a good way to explain it? Yeah, I think that's that's pretty close. I think it's important to note that it is a human supervised version. So it was never kind of autonomously generating content. Can you give us an example of the kind of question that someone might ask? The easiest thing might be just to describe posts that you know I tend to make. So I struggle with migraines. And when I'm having a migraine, sometimes I have a thought in my head that, you know, this will never get better. This is horrible. So I might create a post um, talking about my migraine and then the peer supporters, you know, would respond and say, hey, I understand. I also struggle with health problems. You know, a few things to note, science is always progressing. Um, there's always an opportunity for, you know, new treatments. So it's this idea of empathizing with the person, validating their experience, when we worked with GPT-3, we found that it could do that really, really well. So you said that people responded well to it, but after a couple of days, you decided to take this feature down. What, what was working and what wasn't working? So each time you get a response, uh, anonymous little message on our platform, you can rate it. And what we found is that the people who chose to get an assist from GPT-3 to help enhance their contribution, um, those messages in general were rated more highly than the messages um, sent by people as usual, which is like a really fascinating result. But our team, in particular myself and some of our teammates and some of our super users, we were using this as well, of course, and we did a lot of testing prior to this. But we found two things that were interesting. The first is, as a helper uh, on the platform, it didn't feel as warm of an experience to have GPT-3 co-write the response. It felt almost a little bit more sterile, and I kind of missed having that opportunity to think deeply about this other anonymous person um, on the internet. The other thing we noticed is that we could start to tell which responses were solely written by GPT-3, meaning that, of course, there was a human reviewing it, but they really didn't make many modifications. It just feels different uh, when there's a machine doing a lot of the legwork. You don't feel like someone has taken as much time to think about you. Um, machines don't have lived experience. So if the message says, you know, I understand you, um, it comes across as a little odd. So it was 
a nuanced user experience uh, thing that ultimately decided to pull it back and regroup and, and try to understand it. So GPT-3, at least, doesn't seem advanced enough to give you the support you'd get from your friends and family. But this is just the beginning. Companies like Google have AI tools they haven't even released, and we don't even know how advanced those bots are or how advanced they'll be in the future. And here's a secret about mental health apps. If you're not dealing with an actual medical professional, these companies are basically unregulated. You better believe that if there's a way to make money on mental health using technology, somebody is gonna try it. And there are some ethical questions that we're gonna have to answer right now because it won't be long before the robots start asking about your relationship with your mother. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out other Gizmodo videos here on YouTube.